Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored Never Boring. It's time to paint another miniature from the awesome Masters of the Universe Battleground game from Archon Studio. The Always Bored Never Boring members had a vote behind the scenes and they decided it's time to paint Teela. When sculpting these miniatures, Archon Studio tend to draw on various elements from the action figures, the filmation series and the mini comics. For Teela, they seem to have stayed relatively faithful to her appearance in the early storybooks packaged with the toys before they switched to the more commonly remembered mini comic format. She has her hair up in a ponytail, fur trim around the shoulders and full gold detailing on her clothing, including chain belt, which is consistent with some of her early book appearances. However, the sword she has here seems to be based on her weapon from the later 2000X series. Still, regardless of that, for the most part we can use a colour scheme similar to the early books. To start, I have primed the miniature with army painter Matt White, and with that dry we are going to focus on the skin, as that is quite a large amount of the miniature. Teela's action figure had quite a dark skin tone, and she exhibited similarly bronze skin in later cartoons, but in the mini comics and filmation series she has a pale complexion, so I'm leaning more that way. First I am thinning some Cadian flesh tone and I'm going to apply two thin coats of that. It doesn't matter too much if I go on surrounding areas, all that will get tidied up later. For now I just want to get a nice even coverage on all the skin. When that's completely dry I'm going to do a shade of Reichland flesh shade. Because I want to keep the skin tone lighter and because there isn't a lot of sculpted detail on the skin, I'm not going too heavy with the shade. I want just enough to get some decent recess shading and to bring out more of the details on Teela's face. We'll go back to do some layering later, for now I'm going to switch to Ulthu and Grey. I'm going to use this to paint over the white clothing and the fur trim around the collar. This is to give us an off-white base colour to work up from when we highlight. With that done, I need to paint the gold. My intention with the Battleground miniatures is to avoid metallic paint as much as possible, as very little metallic colouring was used on the action figures. It was mainly spot details, things like Jitsu's hands, stuff like that. However, Teela's action figure did have metallic paint on the armour, so I am going to use metallics here. First, I am using Balthazar Gold, which is a dingy, coppery sort of colour. I'm going to put down a base coat of that over all of the armour details, trying to be a bit careful not to get any overspill. That includes all the wristbands and armbands too. And just a quick note on using metallics, it's a really good idea to change your water when you are done with them to avoid any flakes getting into your other paints. Then I'm going to get some Null Oil. I'm putting this on the fur trim and the gold. I wouldn't normally use Null Oil on metal, and for shading something that's going to be white, I would normally go for something like a blue, but I want to get some really dark recess shading here for a more cartoony sort of look. And at this point, it looks bloody atrocious. Let's hope it all comes together at the end. Next, I'm going back to Balthazar Gold, I'll thin it heavily with Lamian Medium and just start lining back in the raised details and any flat parts of the metal. This is the most tedious part of painting this miniature because the details are very fine here. After that I'm going to do pretty much the same thing with Liberator Gold on the most raised details, just to give that metal a bit more of a shine. Next I'm taking the Ulthuan Grey and I'm going to thin it down to a strong glaze with Lamian Medium. The idea here is the paint is quite translucent and we are going to carefully build the colour back up on the white areas of the clothing. And of course because these are white clothes and not grey clothes, afterwards we are switching to white scar and again we are going to make a heavy glaze and layer up that white on the clothing and the fur trim. This does require a bit of patience to get in all around the gold details. With that done we can go back to our skin. So first I have my Cadian flesh tone thinned right down and I'm going to gradually build up that colour over multiple layers. After three coats of that I'm going to add a very small amount of Pallid Witch Flesh and I will apply another coat. From then on I'm going to add just a small drop of Pallid Witch Flesh between each coat, lightening it up until I'm happy it's about where I want it to be. And don't forget, with each new layer going on the miniature, we want to leave some of the previous layers showing to create shade and definition. Next, I'm going to use some fur brown from Army Painter. This is quite a red brown and is quite similar to the colour of Teela's boots in the early books. So two coats of that, just on the boots. And while I've got the fur brown out, I'm going to add a drop to Mephiston Red to do Teela's hair. Now, originally, Teela was depicted as being blonde, so really I should do blonde. But for me, the filmation depiction of Teela with the reddish-brown hair is the definitive version, so we're going to give her the Red Sonia treatment. 
I'm then going to use some Reichland Flesh Shade on her hair and also on her boots for a slightly softer wash than if I used Agrax Earth Shade. Just a little, trying not to spill on surrounding painted areas like the face. Then I'm going back to Fur Brown to do a highlight on the raised surfaces of the boots to help bring out that detail. Just two thin coats should be fine here, and then I'm going to do a one-to-one -one mix of Fur Brown with Evil Sun Scarlet, and then mix in just a tiny drop of Ogryn Camo. This is to do a little highlighting on the hair. Why have I added green to the mix? Well, if I was a decent artist, I could probably tell you something about colour wheels and complementary colours. As it is, I can just say that adding a little green to red makes the red a bit less intense, so hopefully this will get us to a finished hair colour that is a little bit closer to the colour in the Filmation series. Next is the staff, and again this is something that looks different depending on your source reference. In Teela's early book appearances, it was a sort of brown-orange, while the accessory with the action figure was red. Archon Studio painted the staff gold. So, I'm going for the orangey brown here, starting with Balor Brown as a base. Balor Brown is a layer paint and it doesn't cover well before you thin it, so once you have thinned it, you will need two coats of this for good coverage. When that's dry, I'm switching to Seraphim Sepia. I'm going to do a heavy wash of this over the staff, and then when that's completely dry, I'm just going to go back with my Balor Brown and line in some of the raised details. Some of the detail on the staff is quite soft, so I'm just going to do the best I can with my shaky hands and failing eyesight. Next, we are doing the sword. I had to look up this more modern version of her sword from the later series online. I found a few different colourways, but the one I'm going for is a gold handle with silver blade and a purple gemstone. So I'm going to use Retributor Armour for the base coat. I'm thinning it down a little, like always. There are some fine details on the hilt of the sword that we don't want to clag up. Then I'm switching to Lead Belcher, and I'm going to apply a coat of that to the sword blade. We want to keep this nice and thin as well. I'm then going to grab some Nuln Oil, and the whole sword is going to get a wash of that. Again, I wouldn't normally use Nuln Oil to shade gold, but that's the look I'm going for here to get quite bold recess shading. Then I'm going to use a thin coat of Liberator Gold on the handle to brighten that up, and then I will switch to Stormhost Silver and I'm going to layer it up on the sword blade. To finish the sword, I need to paint the gem, which is a sort of lavender colour. I'm not going to be fussy here, I'm doing a one-to-one -one mix of Evil Sun Scarlet and Thousand Suns Blue, then adding a drop of White Scar, and I will apply that mix directly to the gemstone. To finish the gemstone, I will just add a dot of White Scar as a quick and dirty reflection, and that's done. And in fact, that is Teela pretty much done. I added in her eyes, that's just a thin line of white scar and a small dot of Abaddon Black. After you've done that, if the eyes look too prominent, you can always do a very, very light glaze of Cadian Flesh Tone over the eyes to tone them back down. The last thing to do is the base, which I'm not going to go through in detail in this video because it's the same process I use on a lot of these bases. It's just a Xandri Dust base coat and a very heavy Agrax Earthshade wash, and then I go back in and I highlight the slab with Xandri Dust in a light, sketchy way, gradually adding in a little Screaming Skull for progressive highlights. Any grass gets a coat of Auric Flesh, then an Athonian Camo Shade wash, followed by an Auric Flesh highlight, while the little pillar is a Mechanica Standard Grey base and highlight with a Nuln Oil wash. And we're finished. I'm not going to lie, this miniature took absolutely ages. It was a full day plus change. The golden design on the clothing took a lot of time and so did building up the skin to the paleness I was happy with. But ultimately, I am pleased with the result. Thank you, as always, to the Always Bored Never Boring Club members for voting to see Teela painted up. You already know which Battleground miniature is coming next, so watch out for that. And thank you, everyone, for watching today. If you liked the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really liked the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.